Hi guys, I'm Jeremy. At 19, I managed to become a father without a child, a grass widower without ever being married, and a scoundrel without any excuse. And what have you achieved so far? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm trying to joke. Otherwise, uh, I'll start crying. There's nothing funny about my story. As you might have guessed, there is a girl in my story. Her name is Angie. Now, it seems to me that she's really kind of an angel. Sweet, funny, and kind. Both of us were 18 years old. We had been together for a couple of years, and frankly, I was already stealing glances at other girls. And it seemed to me that Angie, just like me, was having a good time without making any future plans. I didn't follow who else she was talking to very closely, and I even admitted to myself that she might have someone else in mind. It seemed quite natural to me for this age. But one day she told me that she was pregnant. And let me repeat that. We were 18 years old. We'd never talked about a wedding or having a family. She was just a girlfriend, you know? What babies could we have been talking about? A anyway, Angie didn't give me time to think this news over. She stood in front of me, waiting for an answer. And my answer was, no children. Her eyes filled with tears. I felt the trap begin to slam shut, and I quickly said that I, I wasn't even sure that this was my child, and that if she wanted to get married and to have a baby, she should try to play this trick on someone else. Uh, but I was off. <sighs> Are you shocked by my behavior? Well, put yourself in my shoes. Uh, there was another reason why my reaction was so reckless. Angie was a rich girl, meaning that her parents were wealthy people. Therefore, I, I didn't feel like I was leaving the girl in trouble. I knew that no matter what decision she made, she wouldn't have any difficulties implementing it, at least in terms of funding it. You know, it, it was more like an ordinary breakup. I said so to my parents, and our mutual friends thought the same way. I didn't even try to find out whether Angie was keeping the child or not. I just moved on without thinking about any of this. I worked my way toward graduating, learned to ride a mountain bike, new video games came out. I, I was very busy, believe me. A few months passed, and one day, I received a message from one of my friends. It was, we need to talk ASAP. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking about Angie when I read this. But when I saw him, he grabbed the front of my shirt and growled in my face asking me how I could do that to her. It turned out he met Angie somewhere, saw her big belly, and one thing led to another. She didn't tell him that this was my child, but mentioned when she was due. My friend came to the simplest conclusion, and now he was yelling in my face, asking if I knew what kind of hell it is growing up without a father. Uh, well, he knew what he was talking about. His old man had disappeared into thin air when he was a kid. After that conversation, something changed in me. I couldn't forget how my friend yelled at me and I mumbled that this child wasn't mine, already realizing that this was nothing more but a miserable excuse. The last straw, a bale of straw, was the arrival of my older sister. Six months ago, she gave birth to a daughter, and this was her first visit with her child. I had never dealt with babies and thought of them as something like pets that are hard to look after. But it turned out that these little guys were so cool. I imagined that this child was my, my daughter. And it didn't scare me at all. On the contrary, it was a cool feeling. So, one evening, I called Angie and said that I wanted to see her. She was surprised and even happy to hear from me. But her voice sounded somehow weak. She said she was in the hospital. Uh, something was wrong with her pregnancy. This only strengthened my desire to see her and to say what I wanted to say. I told my parents that I had an urgent matter to deal with and went to the hospital to see Angie. They let me visit her, but they warned me that I shouldn't worry her. But I was sure that I was bringing her good news. Ah, oh my. She was so pale, almost transparent. I wanted to make a solemn speech and instead began to kiss her slender hands and ask for forgiveness. I, I almost cried. A and she forgave me. We agreed that I would come to see her the next day when her parents were there, and together we would tell them that I was the father of the child, and that we were going to get married. I felt very happy. I felt right. The next day, when I arrived at the hospital, Angie was not in the ward. The nurse told me that she was in the intensive care unit. When I arrived there, I saw her parents. They sat, embracing each other, waiting for news. 
The whole previous night, I had been thinking about how Angie and I would talk to them, and about what I would say, but now all that didn't fit the situation. I sat in the distance and waited. I don't know how much time had passed. An hour or two, maybe? A doctor appeared and said something to them. Angie's mom looked very depressed. She almost cried. Her father frowned. Honestly, all I really wanted was to run away from there. Uh, but I went up to them and said, it was pretty stupid, but uh, I said that I was Angie's husband and asked what was wrong with her and our child. The doctor wanted to answer me, but Angie's mom interrupted him. I don't know who you are, but you better leave this place right now, she told me, barely restraining her anger. I looked at Angie's father and realized that leaving was the best I could do now if I didn't want to be thrown out like some naughty puppy. They didn't remember me, and my silly words about Angie's husband sounded like a mockery to them. But I didn't leave the hospital right away. First, I went to the information desk and asked about Angie. They told me that in the early morning she fell into a coma. She was urgently operated on, but her condition remained serious. Very serious. When I got back home, I, I thought I was fairly calm, but my mother noticed that something was wrong. She asked me what happened, and suddenly I, I told her everything. I talked and talked, and th then I felt like I was going to cry. Mom brought me some water and asked me what happened to the child. That was her only question, and right then, I realized that I didn't know the answer. The next day, I went to the hospital. They told me that Angie was still in a coma, and I asked about the child. It was a girl, and she was alive. She was born premature and placed in an incubator, but she was alive. I asked the nurse if I could take a look at her and look through the glass for a long time. Well, she wasn't pretty or cute at all. <laughs> but she was my daughter, and I realized that I wanted to be a father to her, as I had promised Angie I would. And then, well, I had to wait for Angie to recover. I was sure that together, we would be able to explain to her parents that, well, that I was a good guy, and that there was just a misunderstanding between us, and then they would eventually accept me into their hearts. But days went by, and Angie remained in a coma. The doctor said that her life was no longer in danger, but that she could not wake up. Well, long story short, a month passed, and it became clear that Angie's condition was going to remain the same. I went to the hospital every day to find out the news and look at our daughter through the glass. She already looked almost like a normal baby. It was clear that soon she could be taken home by Angie's parents, and perhaps... I would never see her again. I talked with my parents about my wish to take the baby to our home. I can't say that my parents were enthusiastic, but they didn't try to dissuade me. There was only one problem. Officially, for Angie's child, I was nobody. I made some inquiries and found out how much money I would need for legal advice and a DNA test. The amount was considerable, but I calculated how much I could make if I sold all my gadgets and collectible figures, and if I borrowed some money from my friends and asked my parents for help. I planned that, later, I would find a part-time job and gradually repay all my debts. So, the next time I was in the hospital, I talked with the doctor about my intentions and asked that they not give the child to anybody but me. He reassured me that the baby would have to stay in the hospital for at least several more weeks, so I had time. I was determined and had made up my mind, but a day later, Angie's father called me and asked to meet. We met at the hospital, next to the window through which my daughter and his granddaughter was visible. I don't know how he found out that I was going to pick up the child, but he told me that he had talked with his lawyer and that I had every right to take the girl, but that if I wanted to do the best for her, I should abandon my plans. He said I was too young and wasn't making enough money yet, and my parents were not very wealthy people, but he and his wife would be able to give this little girl everything. I wanted to answer him, but he stopped me. Do not rush. Just think. Ah, if only Angie had told me this when she announced her pregnancy. But everything happened as it happened. And you know, I thought hard about what to do. Every day, I still went to the hospital, looked at this tiny little girl and just thought. And on one of those days, when Angie's father approached me again, I, 
I agreed not to claim the child. The only thing I asked for was to be able to visit my daughter and that she'd grow up knowing that I was her father. Angie's father said that he would do his best to convince his wife that I was a good guy, but until Angie wakes up, 